I think uh, this has been a remarkable week. It was a remarkable result, and it's one that, um, that I welcome. I believe it would have been a tragedy had uh, this referendum been passed on the tissue of lies and half-truths and cynicism that was presented by the government. I believe it would have undermined, uh, it would have undermined respect for democracy. Uh, and I think it teaches us some lessons that we've got to look at. Uh, I wrote, for example, when it became clear that this figure of 20 million uh, that was going to be allegedly saved was completely wrong uh, to both the Standards and Public Office and to the Referendum Commission. They both said that it was outside their scope. There was nothing they could do. Well, it should be within somebody's scope to stop deliberate lying during elections. And I think this illustrates that we need, uh, for that reason, and also because of the very obscure way in which the ballots were presented to the people, I think this indicates we need a permanent electoral commission uh, to look into these things and to oversee all these matters. And I think we should use an examination of this uh, as a template of this, this election. Um, with regard to the cynicism, I mean the immediate volfast by the government, who tried to bully the people by saying there was no alternative. Uh, it was not ever going to be reform, and they would not reform. Immediately, within hours of the result, they were talking of reform. I'm glad of that, but I think it does show a cynicism. And then the attempt to dump all the blame on Richard Bruton. People should not be putting party before the country. And I think the saddest thing was that this expensive exercise, 15 million, was attempted at a time when we were still in a moment of real economic crisis. And for anybody to divide the country and to set one house against the other, I think that was a really very uh, grave, uh, very grave mistake. I'd like to say that there were currents underneath the surface, in addition to those of who were, us who were visible, and there were some really brilliant inter interventions. We were a small a number of groups and individuals who took on the machine, and the, mach the government machine, which was so powerful, but they underestimated the intelligence, I think, uh, of the Irish people. Now, I would say this. This is not a moment for us to gloat or to say well done to everybody. This is a moment for us to say we have been given a vote of confidence by those who voted in this referendum. Our real obligation now is to them, is to show them the valuable work that we can do and the valuable work that we've done in the past. I never once trashed Shannon Aaron. I never once said it was dysfunctional, although to a certain extent, obviously through the electoral process it is, but we've known for 30 years how that could be fixed and so on. Because I know of the work that's been done. In the, I think last night, I'm not sure, there was a thing uh, on RTE about fluoride. Uh, that debate started here in this house. It never gets acknowledgement. They have a situation where they're now introducing new photographic equipment uh, to stem the tide of social welfare fraud and make sure the money goes to people who need it. There was one person who made 450,000 by cheating. It was from this house that the government got the idea of photographic identification. So let's also make sure we communicate with the public what we have done, what we are doing, and we need to sell ourselves. But I, my final two points, if I may, with this. This was a very dangerous referendum because it also sought to clip the powers of the presidency. And that was almost entirely overlooked. It was a, a, a power grab. And now in the, in the legislation that was put together, uh, and which is extremely valuable, I mean, the things I certainly don't agree with, and I look forward to saying that tonight, I'm not going to work for nothing. You must be bloody joking. Um, people talk about elitism. Now, in the bill it says cut it by half. That was just a kind of a tidbit to throw out to the public. Uh, and it caught on very well. And last night, uh, somebody on Vincent Brown was saying, oh, well, I would agree if they worked for nothing. No bloody hope. People talked about elitism. If you want elitism, if you want nobody but aristocrats and millionaires, that's what you do. I want people like the leader of this house, like Senator Whelan, who have known what it's like to be unemployed. I, I am Senator Gilroy. I, I want these people to have it. And do you really expect people to come off the unemployment register Your and work for nothing? You're living in cloud cuckoo land, and I don't give a damn if it's unpopular. I'm saying it.
and I'm not going to stop saying it. And I work your sometimes a 12 to 14 up. hour day. I ain't doing it for nothing, pal. Uh, <laughs> Senator.